Hey everyone, and welcome back to FSI DFS. I am McKinley412. Uh, we got two slates uh, on this Thursday that we're going to be looking at. Uh, this is the video for the early slate. We're going to have another video out for the main slate. So please come check that one out as well. Uh, I think that one's a five gamer. This one's a four game. No other that we have to really be paying attention to uh, at this point. Uh, but as always, right, please keep an eye out on the weather. You never know when uh, those summer pop-up showers are going to happen. So, uh, yeah, I mean, what we're going to do is we'll just kind of dive right in. Here's some of my favorite pitching rankings. Uh, and then we'll talk about kind of where the cash is leaning towards, the cash build, uh, and the good GPP build, in my opinion. Um, these are not official cores by any means. Um, these are not finalized. Obviously, I want to see lineups uh, and everything else, kind of dive even deeper into the data. Uh, but just kind of a first look, rough look, uh, is kind of what we're looking at here. So. Uh, not many pitchers on the slate, obviously, just because it's four games, but uh, the first two that kind of jumped out, let me zoom in so I can get, uh, just kind of focus on the pitchers here at the moment, we're 150. There we go. All right. So we'll just kind of talk about pitchers uh, at this point, McClanahan and Burns, I feel like those were the two guys that really stood out uh, immediately, um, just based on their names, based on their matchups and everything. Uh, McClanahan has a so comparing the two pitchers, McClanahan, 36 strikeout percentage uh, per, on the season so far. Burns at 31%, uh, as you can see. McClanahan has been very consistent. His uh, strikeout rates have been flying, uh, especially in the past month of the season here. We can go to his game logs. You can see he's putting seven or more strikeouts every single game. And he's doing it with only, you know, in the low 90s in pitches. So it's pretty impressive what he's doing. And even while doing so, he's doing it. Um, he's getting a serious discount on Thursday. So he was up to into the five digit range. Now he's only 8.7. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense. He's going up against St. Louis. St. Louis does strike out a very limited amount against left-handed pitching. They're actually pretty good against them. Uh, Durs had a 18% clip, which is the third lowest uh, in the league uh, against this pitch hand. So McClanahan, I still think he's got an edge over Corbin Burns. Um, Corbin Burns, He's what nine hundred dollars more. He's got a I would you know you could argue a tougher matchup going up against Philadelphia and some of their power bats. And lately he's been inconsistent. But really, if you take out these two starts, uh, like take out the San Diego start, take out this Atlanta start, he's been pretty decent. 40, 21, 24, 21, 28. and he's kind of like posting up McClanahan's numbers. So like there's really not too much separating these guys. They both have pretty equal uh, matchups. They uh, have pretty, you know, for the most part, equal uh, strikeouts, everything else. You know, their performance so far this season. McClanahan might have a slight edge. And on top of that slight edge, uh, he's just so much cheaper. So I would vote McClanahan over Burns at that point. Anderson, I have uh, ranked third here. He's only got a 24% strikeout rate uh, on the season, which just shells in comparison to McClanahan, Burns, and even Cease uh, at 32%. But Anderson going up against the White Sox, 8.1K. He's gone three consecutive starts without allowing a single earned run. Uh, he's only allowed one walk while striking out 19 in that time frame. So this past four games have been lights out incredible. However, uh, three of those games were against Arizona and Washington. Uh, so I'm not like super excited about that. Uh, he does have a pretty tough matchup going up against Chicago White Sox here. Uh, the White Sox going up against left-handed pitching. If you watch these videos, you know that uh, the White Sox are great against left-handed pitching uh, last season, this season. It's continued on. So Anderson, well, I think he's a fantastic play. If you have him in your cash builds, awesome. You know, if you want to go somewhere else, totally fine too. I understand it. But this is a serious discount for a guy, you know, who has been pitching phenomenally as of late, even though the strikeouts haven't been to the clip as the other guys. Sees 32% strikeout rate. I put him fourth uh, just because, at one, he's going up against the Dodgers. Like, that is a brutal matchup for any pitcher uh, in the league. And he's had a bit of an issue with the walks as of late. His past two starts, he has 11 walks and just 11 innings pitch. Uh, so if you are walking a guy per inning, big concern. Uh, one good thing or one great thing, I guess, is that in those 11 innings, he's only allowed three hits. Uh, so while guys are getting on base, it's via the walk, but you know, if he can kind of control uh, his pitches, 
maybe he can get around uh, the Dodgers, but still. At 9.2K, second uh, most expensive guy on the slate. McClanahan's cheaper. Anderson's cheaper on much cheaper. Uh, so that just kind of makes me lean towards Cease until he can show that he's got his command back or if he was in a better matchup. I think he's ranked fourth for me. And then you got the bottom four. Uh, and that's kind of really where the two great groups lie. Uh, t- guy I have highest ranked is Molly uh, for Cincinnati. Going up against Arizona, Molly's got a 24% strikeout rate, so right in line with Anderson there. Uh, but one thing I do love about him is not only his 6.3 uh, price tag, that is certainly juicy, uh, but he's going up against Arizona. And Arizona against right-handed pitching have a 25% strikeout rate as a team. It's like the second highest in the entire league. Uh, so Molly, we know what he's capable of. He does have a pretty high ceiling as a pitcher. You can kind of see it, you know, that high 20s, even low 30s are possible for this guy. We saw it last season. Uh, so now he's got a great matchup, 6.3K. I think he's one of my favorite GPP pitchers uh, because of it. So 6.3, do not mind him at all. Eflin, right below him, uh, 21% strikeout rate. He's got a tougher matchup going up against Milwaukee. It's not like a murderer's row lineup by any means. Uh, but when you're comparing Molly and you're comparing Eflin, you're kind of looking at, okay, Molly has a higher strikeout rate. He's going up against a worse offense. He's going up against an offense that strikes out more. Uh, and he's got an equal or greater ceiling. Uh, so Molly, and he's cheaper. Uh, so Molly definitely edges Eflin for me there. Eflin, pass. Two out of the past three games for him have been amazing. 32 against the Dodgers, 30 against Angels. Angels are in a total free fall mode. Don't know what's going on there. Um, But yeah, so Eflin, he can't get knocked around, uh, but he can also have that feeling upside as well. And then your last two, Nicholas and Davies. I have no interest in either of these guys. I think the other six pitchers are, you know, great enough. Maybe not great, but they're certainly much better spots uh, than these two guys. Their walk rates uh, are also way up there combined with their low strikeout rates. Doesn't make sense to really go these guys. Uh, I guess it is a four-game slate. You, If you are in a, like a 150 max lineup, you're going to have some shares of these guys, uh, but it could be pretty ugly. So turning towards the bats, uh, got Tampa Bay and Cincinnati. Here's my favorite two. Obviously the two teams that are going up against Nicholas and Davies. Uh, those are the two pitchers that really, you know, they're the oddballs of the group. They they don't kind of really fit with the other six. Uh, so those are probably my two favorite offenses in terms of a cash build. GPP, uh, Dodgers and the White Sox. This would be like a game stack. So the Dodgers, I mentioned, um, they are going up against Cease. Cease, if he has some issues with, you know, his control, once again, um, maybe he doesn't limit the three hits in 11 innings again. Uh, and it's the Dodgers. Uh, so I do think that they can easily uh, fly. Well, they're not really going to fly under the radar. They're the Dodgers. Uh, but I do think they can come in at lower ownership given the pitcher on the other side. Other GPB, uh, it's the Chicago White Sox. I mentioned before that Anderson, you know, he hasn't allowed an earned run in three consecutive starts, uh, but just 24% strikeout rate. And I mentioned that the White Sox are a great team against left-handed pitching. Uh, so maybe they can get to him here, and maybe this is a game that kind of shoots out. Uh, so you'll kind of see uh, in my GPP build earlier, uh, or that I have over there, um, kind of has that game stack going on. Milwaukee and Philadelphia, um, that's not right. It's Milwaukee and Arizona. This is not right. Let me update it. <laughs> Milwaukee and Arizona, there's some cheap plays. Uh, if you just need a kind of like a one-off or you know a mini stack of something, you can easily go to those guys there. And then the leverage going up against McClanahan and going up against Burns. That's going to be St. Louis and Philadelphia. Obviously, 150 max. Uh, go ahead, play those um, two teams, stack those two teams. But if you're just building like one or two lines, I don't know. It's not really where I'm going. All right. So that's kind of where uh, the cash and the GPP uh, builds are kind of leaning me towards. Uh, you're gonna. I'm going to start off with McClanahan and cash uh, most likely. And then Burns or Anderson can be kind of my SP2 from there. And then it's going to be targeting Tampa Bay. And it's going to be targeting Cincinnati. Uh, Choi or Votto, they're very similarly priced on DraftKings. Uh, so at first base, you know, picking one of those two guys. Drury, he's day-to-day. So please make sure that he's actually in the lineup. And then Tommy Pham, he's been doing fantastic lately. Rosarena, uh, he has also been doing great lately. And then a choice between Senzel and Kiermaier. 
Uh, so this is kind of what it looks like uh, when you do plug it in. You kind of, so I put in Kiermaier, I put in Choi. The other two guys, very similar priced. Um, but yeah, so McClanahan, if you go with Anderson, uh, your remaining salary is going to be 3.4K. You can easily fill in the gaps, uh, even if you go a little bit cheaper at catcher. Um, Burns, if you throw him in there, you're looking at 2.9K. It gets a little tight. It's totally possible, uh, but it is getting a little bit tight uh, for this to be a full build uh, with that. So, you know, my initial lean, and like I said, uh, this is not an official core. Uh, this is just kind of like my first look as to kind of where I'm probably going to be heading um, on Thursday afternoon. Uh, but yeah, so you can go Anderson. If you really want to go crazy, you can even go down to a guy like Molly. Hope he has like one of those stronger games. And now you're at 4K remaining uh, for the rest of your guys. You can really jam in a strong lineup there. Uh, so that's kind of what the cash would be looking like. GPP, uh, this is kind of where I'm at. It's going to be a Chicago White Sox, LA Dodgers game stack uh, with a choice between Freeman and Abreu at first base. Um, so I was thinking about the GPP and I was like, where do I want to go? Cincinnati, obviously, cash build. Tampa Bay, cash build. I, if I'm just building, you know, I'm not going too crazy. Uh, St. Louis, I don't want St. Louis going up against McClanahan. Uh, Molly is my favorite GPP play, so I'm not going to be playing Arizona against them. Uh, I'm, I don't want to play Philadelphia against Burns and then Milwaukee against Eflin. I mean, maybe you want to throw Milwaukee in there. Maybe. Uh, but I think a game stack here could certainly, certainly go under the radar. And if you want to throw in Burns um, with Molly, you can do that. First base, I mentioned you can have the option between Freeman and Abreu. You can see they're pretty similar priced. I can throw in Freeman, and I'm still at 3.7K uh, remaining. Say I go with Abreu, uh, it's not going to be too much different, 3.8. Uh, let me see if I throw in Betts what happens there. 2.8, I mean, totally possible. So you can really get all the studs in this uh, Dodgers and White Sox game stack, even with a top pitcher, uh, if you go Molly as um, your SP1. Well, would it be SP1? Regardless, doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, so this is a pretty straightforward slate, uh, all things considered. I think there's a serious drop uh, between the pitchers. I mean, there's you can really group them very easily. Nicholas and Davies, just nowhere near anybody else. Uh, I think it's your choices between Molly and Eflin, uh, McClanahan and Burns. And then how much do you believe Anderson's three-game stretch? And how much do you uh, trust Cease to not uh, lose command against the LA Dodgers? So that kind of covers things. Um, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. Again, we do have another video uh, coming out here shortly uh, for the main later slate, the five game slate. Uh, so please go check that out as well. Uh, we really appreciate it. As always, good luck in your contest and we will see you in the next video.